What's up, everybody? It is 2022 Guided Life, and again, we are out here with JJ, JJ's Guide Service. Hey, what is up, buddy? It's good. Good to be back out here. You know, it's uh, it's been a long time coming to get out on the ice this year. Uh, the bay's doing pretty good. We have some rougher uh, ice conditions, but that's kind of the, the norm for up here. But we're out here, we're fishing, and we're doing a little catching today, so it's it's been pretty good. So the goal, obviously, today is to catch whitefish. And now, like you said, you kind of just got out here. How long have you had shacks at all? Um, we've been out here... Honestly, just a couple days. Um, you know, we've been kind of spending the last week here, really kind of just building our paths out here just because of the challenging conditions to get out here. Just some really, really rough ice this year. Um, so we got our roads cut in. Um, now we're out here, we got the shacks out. So it took a little bit, you know, we kind of spend, uh, it almost took two weeks really, just researching, kind of finding the best route, seeing what the ice would do. Um, letting some south wind, which is kind of a, a big thing up here on the bay, impact the ice and see what the ice does. Um, seeing how the ice pack is growing in the northern half of the bay is also something we really watch. Um, and all those things kind of checked off the list. So, um, you know, we can get out here now. So when targeting the whitefish out here, we're kind of on a reef. And this area, we're in, what, 70 to 80 foot yep. of water? So we're, we're fishing on a big reef structure here. So it breaks from about 65 down to 100 feet. Um, and whitefish, they're feeding on gobies. So it's uh, there's all kinds of crevices and rocks for these gobies to burrow into. So that's why the whitefish are here. So we got a couple secret baits that we're going to bring out later on. But again, we're going to talk about this in plenty in nauseam today. But again, let people know if they're interested to get out for whitefishing yet this year or any other trips, yep. you know, where can they find all your you information? You can just look me up online, jjsguideservice.com or in Google, just JJ Malvitz Fishing. Um, pretty easy to find. I'm on Facebook. But uh, yeah, all my information's on my website. Um, check it out there, jjsguideservice.com. All right, so we're in a warm-up shack, and JJ's gonna go over some of the baits that he likes to use out here for whitefish. All right, so, you know, we're fishing a lot of soft plastics, so we got some Z-Man trick shots, and then some three-inch Kytec paddle tails. Um, really, any kind of three-inch plastic, anything that kind of mimics a goby on the bottom. Uh, you know, Matt bought this thing, I don't know what it is, but he's gonna tie it up, and like I said, any three-inch plastic on the bottom, uh, just kind of mimicking that goby profile is what the whitefish are feeding on. So we're going to kind of match the hatch in a sense. So you can tie this up and drop her down and get her hooked up. So what we got here is this is a savage gear. These are a go. This is a Ned goby looking bait. This thing always interests me out here, especially because the gobies are such a heavily foraged, you know, bait out here. So we wanted to try a couple of these. Who knows if they work? I mean. I was always told, don't guide the guide, but here I am trying to guide the guide. But I think I might trust in JJ a little bit later on to go back to some of the standbys, the things that are always gonna work. But we're gonna rig some of these up. Now, the cool thing about this Savage is this is meant for Ned rigging, but it also has a tube style body. So you can either run a Ned jig through it or you can run a tube jig through it, which we might try to do here. I got three different colors with us, so we're gonna give that a whirl. But when you're rigging up these, JJ, these are you just rigging them standard style like yep, a swim bait? Kind of just like a swim bait. You know, it's a little trickier with a, the trick shot um, just because of the plastic. It's just how the composition of it is. But the Kytex are really nice. I just kind of like the uh, trick shot because you get kind of that, that neutral buoyancy with that tail kind of sometimes in the current is kind of going back and forth. And that's the thing out here too is on Green Bay, especially as we have a lot of current, so you know necessarily your bait isn't right below you you might have a little current drift so that's why we team it up with like a quarter ounce jig head just because of the depth of water we fish do you want to grab one of these and just rig one up yep sure so please and thank you yep so this is just a little kai tech you go down through just kind of straight up and like you kind of got to do a little guessing where it's going to poke through and then you just weave it on there and there you go what is the standard size head that you like to go with i like a quarter ounce it's kind of a nice balance because i think three ace is just a little too heavy um, the bait just kind of is, you don't get as much sensitivity with it. And a 3 16 is just a little light um, on those days when there is some current. And it's, the thing out here is the current just changes, you know. It'll be ripping out of the north really hard, then it'll slow down, it'll come out of the south. It's it's just kind of one of those those weird phenomenons out, out on the bay, so. So you kind of talked about, you know, the, the weight of that, but what about the line? You know, are you typically running a braid yeah. to a floral so, and then what is your pound? So we're fishing deep water. So we're anywhere from 60 to 100 feet of water. So having a good quality braided line teamed up with a fluorocarbon leader is really, really important 
when you're uh, fishing whitefish just because of the sensitivity. You know, with the technique that we use on these uh, these little paddle tails is you're just kind of pounding that bottom and then you slack your line, pull it tight, pound bottom, slack your line, pull it tight. And you're just kind of waiting for that, that, that feel through that braided line and that enhanced feel of braided line really, really allows you to uh, detect those bites. Yep. And then zero stretch, because you know, it's, it's a long ladder to climb to bring these fish up. So you got a lot of time uh, as you're bringing those fish up and that braided line eliminates a lot of the stress, stress that comes from reeling fish up that deep. And then just having a really good rod, you know, um, I think that's one thing that people really overlook when white fishing and they're like, oh, it's just white fish, you know, but having a quality rod, uh, especially fishing out of this deep, uh, just kind of helps you absorb a lot of the shock that these fish put up. You know, white fish, they do fight and <clears throat> coming from that deep of water, uh, having that quality rod to absorb a lot of that abuse is really important too. Length and action, what do you prefer? I really like a, like a medium fast, uh, a medium fast and anywhere in that 28 to 30 inch, just because, you know, if you're fishing out of a shack or something, you know, having a little longer rod just can be a little bit more of a challenge. Um, but 28 to 30 inch, kind of a medium fast is, is the best way to go. Perfect. Well, we're going to hopefully get out there and put some of these rigged up baits to work and see if we can catch a couple yeah. white fish. Bring, bring a couple up. So it's pretty nice out here today. We're actually going to drill outside of some of the shacks, let some of the anglers, um, you know, hang in there. We're going to go visit with them a little later, but we're going to put the old strike master to work. And so we were talking to JJ and he was saying that this is kind of the top side of the reef. And then as we go further that direction, that's more in the middle of the bottom side of the reef. So roughly 70 something, 65 to 70 here, and it gets as deep as over a hundred feet over there. So again, we're gonna tie up that Savage Gobi, fire in a couple holes and see if we can catch some white fish. Holy shit. All right, so we're gonna use a one shot, gonna get some uh, depth right here. I'm kind of getting rumor that the fish are more out in that deeper area. This is Cole right here. Cole works with JJ. Cole just kind of informed me, you're crazy for fishing outside today when we got warm shacks. And he said, you don't drill a very straight hole. <laughs> All right, Cole, so what are we gonna do here? We're gonna drop this bad boy down and see what our depth is. is it oh, there we go. 71.3. Okay, so we're in about 71 feet of water right here and we're gonna actually go drill Take the strike master and drill a couple holes more this direction because you're thinking cole that yep. we, we got to be in some of the deeper water definitely yeah right around that hundred foot all right let's go let's go move and let's go find some deeper water and then we'll get to work and try to put some uh, whitefish topside all right so we just drilled another hole moved about 50 yards see if this one will shoot right 92. about 92 feet right here and we only moved literally you can see where the warming shack was. That's only about a 50 yard difference. 50 yards. So if we start recording, you guys good with that? You okay with doing a little recording? Cause I mean, here comes the legend right now. Record him. Oh, now the GoPro heard us. Look at that. He's a legend. I'm camera ready, boys. Let me get this tree handle in. Huh? Let me get this tree handle in. Try not to choke on one when I swallow it. Uh, all right. We'll be... He's bumping us. He's gonna bump us deeper. Yeah. Justin! <laughs> let's, let's move now! We're ready! Party on! Alright. Hey, uh, I gotta have you on camera eating my famous pickled eggs. Okay, you we'll like do pickled it. pickled eggs? Yeah. Do you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're, they're good. Hey. What's up? Sam. Hi. Say hi. Hi. What's going on here? What are we doing? Well, we're uh, gonna move this shack. They're not catching any fish right now so we're gonna try to find a different depth maybe to see if the fish are out deeper you know you can't get much shallower than where we're at right now so we're just gonna try something you know move them around a little bit what is depth right around here it's probably about 70 feet of water okay I'm thinking so we can't get too too much shallower on the reef here so you know we can go deeper if anything so constantly just working to find fish i yeah. mean that's that's what the best thing yeah. is about this yep. you know when you guys book a trip with jj i mean these guys are constantly working five minutes later well oh, this is ryan Collins. <laughs> i'm the co-host this is matt thanks for having me yeah. on buddy i really appreciate no it no problem yeah <laughs> uh, you know fish get out of here yeah baby <laughs> that's how we 
do it. Is that, is that the white man one? in the house? Is that the white one? Huh? This is a this is a keeper. No, I don't know. We'll see. You want me to grab First it? First drop, baby. First drop. Oh yeah, that was some weight right there. Nice. First drop. So last year we had this working out well. Like I grabbed all your fish. Don't touch my fish. <laughs> I heard you're supposed to grab the line and shake yeah, it. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Oh, it's a cute little yeah, one. I'm keeping that one. So that's what they look like, huh? Yeah, that's what they do. There you go. You first want to, trap. There. First I'm your guide service. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that was gross. <laughs> first trap. So obviously you just saw that um, the guys out here moved us. And yes, we did catch up with them, everybody. The elusive skunk hat, dude. Yes. To your arm. Yeah. The skunk hat, you got your family with you, huh? I do. I got, I got my father with me. He's my knee. Kyle's helping him up right now. Oh, good. That's good. That's good. That's good sign. First trap. Yeah, because you, yeah. Call, you I mean you guys have been out here for a while and haven't caught anything yet, right? That's called fishing, not catching. <clears throat> yeah? Nah, maybe. I don't know. I gotta get used to it now. I'm just like still in shock and all that I found you. <laughs> it's like seeing a, like a wild animal. Yeah, it's... <laughs> They're hard to miss. <laughs> <laughs> so over there by Kyle is sitting and we got Matt. That's your dad. Right? Man, it's my father Matt and this is um, my uncle. Your uncle Bill? My uncle Bill. I have an uncle Bill as well. I think everybody out there has an uncle Bill. Uncle Bill's been around. He's taught me a lot about hunting. I shot my first duck with Uncle Bill. Um, <clears throat> he can call. This guy can call ducks. Really? Oh, yeah. World class, huh, Bill? I tried. I'm trying to become a fish whisperer right now. Yep. <clears throat> the one with the jig? He could call geese without a call. No, -uh. no. Give us an example. <laughs> no. You just yell geese really loud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's your forte. Hey, goose. Uh... I remember in the duck blind, we were uh, down in southern Illinois. We'd go to this guy's uh, this place and go on a guy to hunt for a duck. And the guy, you know, the guy would call us and stuff, this, this and that. And I, halfway through the morning, Bill picks up his call. And the guy just looks at him like, what? Like, what? He's like, you know, he goes, why, didn't you, why weren't you doing that all morning? Right. Uh -huh. It's because yeah. you never guide the guide. You missed it over there. We were helping Cole, one of JJ's yeah. new guides. Yeah, Matt Cole. Um, <clears throat> do something, and I ended up breaking the depth checker on his drill. So that was pretty cool. So I'm nice. I'm batting a thousand a day. Sure are. <laughs> so it was about this time last year where you we met you. We, when did. we did the live version of the guy of life. What have you been up to, buddy? Working and raising children. That's nice. What I'm doing. Working and raising children. Got two little ones in the house. And, uh, hunting, hunting like I always do. So, and did you know, you showed me something earlier. You got some bear? Yeah, I brought some bear lard for JJ. Um, did you get another bear this year? No, I'm going, uh, my, our friend, uh, with my brother's friend gave us, uh, he, he borrowed our bear barrels because we, we made some bear barrels for, uh, oh, for, for baiting? Yeah, for bear season. And, uh, he gave me 40 pounds of bear lard and, uh, that right there is liquid gold. So explain why this is liquid gold then. Bear lard, and, uh, black bear lard, and dog, a bear will be more fattier in the in the in the fall. But uh, a the bear lard, you render it down, you cut it in chunks, and you render it down. Get out of here, dude's on fire. That's the way it was last year. And uh, bear lard. Is great for a ton of things. I'm not grabbing uh, it's this. It's one, one of the healthiest own. oils that you can have. It's got a lot of the same stuff olive oil has, because olive oil is one of the more healthier oils, especially rather than uh, um, like vegetable oil and stuff. This is nice for fish, too. This is probably guy that's going in the bucket. Yeah, keep fishing and stop talking about bear lard right now. <laughs> but yeah, it's great. Reel it in already. Oh, oh no! no! I thought it got off. <laughs> I'm pounding bottom. I'm not even picking it up. I'm pounding bottom. Did you hear that? It was the air bladder. So what color you got on there? I got this. That's like a blue hue to it. 
the one I'm using. Is that Easy Shiner? Or a Money Shot or something? Z-Man. Oh, that's the Z-Man version? Those are... See, now the thing that was about the Z-Man plastics is they float a little differently, so that might be the ticket here. That tail kind of kicking up and sitting up like that might be the juice, like we talked about. And I thought I gave Matt the juice over there. Apparently not. Steering pops are off. Yeah, we found them. We found them. They're here. They're biting. I just got, I just slapped two in five minutes. That they'll work. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of checking depth. You know, today what I've found is, is the fish are really kind of holding to a very particular depth. It seems like it's kind of a deeper bite today. Um, you know, before we kind of sell the farm here on our shallow bite, um, we're kind of just trying to make sure that we got this deep bite figured out. So you're 98 feet right here. So, um, you know, it's a pretty pronounced break. So, but yeah, keep on catching. First, first, first drop I caught one. Well, if there's someone to catch them, it's you. So, <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah. keep on catching. But that's the way it was last year too. Remember we had that dark melon color. Yeah. And we were passing it back and forth, and like I had it for a while and was crushing them, then I gave it to you, yeah. and then you yeah, started you took, crushing You took my pole. Yeah, <laughs> weird. <laughs> so explain more, like, so we get, because I want to know exactly, so you're just tapping bottom. Yeah, tapping bottom, and I did this last year too. So when, imagine my tip of the finger is, the, uh, this is the bottom of the, of the ground, and the tip of my finger is the jig. It's not, you're not hitting bottom like this, you're tapping. So that's what a lot of those gobies yeah. are doing. You're just slightly tapping on the bottom, and they're going to come up and pick it up. Now, are they, what are your bites like right now? They're hitting them. They're crushing yeah, they're it? Slapping. Okay. So good, healthy bear fat. What was? What, what is in here? Pickled eggs, baby. Is you it, want one? Is it time to crack into them? <laughs> I think I had enough pickles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if you like them, they got a little bit of heat at the end. They're good if you like pickled eggs. So you make this as too as yeah. well? Yeah, I can my own tomatoes. I, I do all that stuff. So what's all in this concoction? Uh, jalapenos, red pepper, sp uh, pickling spice, onion, red pepper. A little bite right there? It might have been a Nicky Nick. What? Uh, how many days are these? You want to you want to you want it to pickle for a week? Okay. But uh, uh, that's like four weeks. So. Oh, they're gonna be real. Yeah, they're good. they're tender. <laughs> like melt in your mouth, goodness. <laughs> all right. you don't have fish We're going in. Hey, are you ready? I would need one of them for fucking all the money in the world. What a confidence! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, pops over there. Do you like it? We're all we're all <laughs> yeah. like, like he's eating. Go ahead, Mikey. I can't believe he's eating. Mikey, 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 look at Mikey. Yeah. No, I have, a, I have a red pepper too. The red peppers are good too. So the I'm dipping in with my white fish finger. That's now. all right. We know that you didn't catch fish yet, so yeah, they're, they're not fishy. You got a knife? I don't. I don't, want to, have a knife? I don't want to dip deep down in. Silly thing when you're out on the ice, ask for a knife. Here we go. World class goose caller, Bill's got one. Is this thing like scalpel sharp too, Bill? Yeah, it's sharp enough. Can I shave with it? Turn back around, man. I'm trying to. I just wanted to make sure I didn't cut my finger off first. All right, we're going in. Ooh. Yeah, that's the actual seaweed, that Bill. That's. <laughs> 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 Yeah, this Plains River. Yeah, this, yeah the Kelsag. <laughs> had to pick it off a dead body. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's see it. Oh, well, that's yeah. not even a pretty egg. That's a good color, though. That yeah. means that's saturated, right? I'm telling you. But are these farm fresh eggs? Thanks, huh? sir. Are these like farm fresh? Do you raise these yourself? Yeah, I wish. No. No, I wish. One day, uh, Bill actually raises uh, chicklets. He used to all the time. Are these goose eggs, Bill? No, it's just chicken eggs. All right, here we go. Ready, Kyle? Last club. Thank you. <laughs> Does anyone want this other half? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be the only one to eat this whole thing, guys. Like, seriously. No, go ahead. No, no another one. one. It does. <laughs> I got two hours to drive home. You tell me I'm going to yeah, No, tomorrow you're probably going to be kicked to the couch. <laughs> All right, boy. That was really good, though. Thank you. <clears throat> That thing's too hot to wear. 
It's thick. It's, it's a thick egg. Like it just kind of resonates for a while. <clears throat> How do you like to prepare them? Uh, honestly, I had so much whitefish, it was just so easy to bake them. I like, uh, I like baking my whitefish on the pan. You just lay it out on the pan, a little Italian seasoning, uh, onion and lemon. Done in 20 minutes, you know, 350. Uh, we fried them, I smoked them, I've done it all. But, uh, with the whitefish, with the other copious amounts of fleas I have in the, the garage freezer, uh, I'm frying my perch and bluegill before my whitefish, but uh, we fried the whitefish and it's, fan it's fantastic, so they're uh, definitely a versatile meal. Um, we had like a garlic parm ver var version of it and that was pretty good. Yeah. How did you do yours? I, <clears throat> yeah, but I, the, the ones we caught out here, yes, I did. I did like a garlic parmesan with that. But we we're saying we came out here in February and fished, and we caught a, a lot of those. And I think the restaurant made them the same kind of way, right? Baked with the garlic parm. How are they smoked? Good. Yeah. Are you you had um, I used my salmon brine for it. Okay. I maybe try a different brine. All right, Billy and Dad, come on, come on. So this was the kind of the bite we had a lot last year, where it was just the it was the weight was there. Yeah, oh yeah, the weight was there. Yep. You had a couple of those of where they picked it up and your light turned light. Yep. And then you put it up in there. Like a crappie bite. Mm -hmm. Shoulders. Oh yeah, this is a nicer one. Now this is on that Savage Gobi. It was on the bottom though, right? On the yep, bottom. right on the bottom. <clears throat> like, like Ryan said, it was you just got to pound the bottom. I wasn't even picking it up. Probably two, three inches is what it. Yeah. See him? No, not yet. This is a nicer yeah, one. Stay out there. Let's go get him. <laughs> <laughs> the showpiece. Here he is. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Not bad. Yep. Here he comes. That's nice fish. There nice we go. Fish. Boom. That's what we're looking for, baby. Show that one off. Look at that right there. That's that there savage goby we talked about. <clears throat> right in the snoot, the top of the mouth. Go ahead, I got. All right, I'll take it. I don't want you to hold my fish. There is. Now, a burp. You hear, hear that burping? That's them releasing their air bladder. So they will. Uh, Look at the hook they placement can on this one. Air bladder other than other fish. So right if you in pull a snoot. fish this deep, a lot of them will die. That's the big ones you look for. That's, that's what we caught. We caught 30 of those. What did you think that was? Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a 20, I don't know, 20 inch fish? All day. You can hear them burping. Isn't that crazy? Like, I could release this fish now and it'd be just fine. Because yeah. that's how they get that air bladder out. You can go in my bucket. That's the quality that we're looking for. Now, that one came on that PB&J Savage, like we talked about. That's that Gobi Mimic. <clears throat> Doesn't mean it's going to catch them all. This so is the one big... we got a bunch more. That's the, Your dad's got the same exact one over there. But here's the deal, then it just takes them half a day to get back down. You slapped that one? You hit it hard? No, that was just weight. No, the fish. The fish, the white fish hit that hard or no? No, it was just weight. Oh, just weight? Yeah. yeah, it was just weight. Like we talked about, I mean, sometimes they hit it and they just come up like a crappie does. You want to try an egg? I'll eat one. Well, here we'll, we'll reverse pivot then. You might need. Do you <coughs> Cap like spicy stuff or not? I do, yeah. yeah. You might need Captain Bill's fancy there knife. There's knife. Did you pause it? No. No, I didn't, not yet. Yeah. They're good. Red peppers are good. Where are they? They're on the bottom. I got another jar at the, at the place. There's one right down to your left. I can see it. There you go. Tommy, what we need? I'm scared of that jalapeno. 
Yeah, that'd be good for you. Warm you right up. That's really good. So that's Bill. Bill, say hi. Hello. How are you guys doing? That's Matt. That's Papa Skunk Cat. Papa Fumar. Here we go. Here, I want to get it like right. I want to get in tight. Like slow mo. Good. There. Slow mo? Yeah. They're bad. <laughs> 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 they're, uh, they're thick. <laughs> they're thick. They're good. They're really they good. are really Flavor's good. Flavor's awesome. Yeah. It doesn't go all the way through either, so it's not soggy. Right. It's yeah, good. you'd be surprised. They're yeah. really good. I'm going to try red pepper. But now I'm getting really hungry. <clears throat> I got some sandwiches if you guys want. I can put them on the Miss Buddy and eat them up. Oh, we, we're good. I might oh, have to. jalapeno is awesome. Eat them all. I got like four more. I make like six jars at a time. I like pick like 50 eggs at a time. Yeah. If you're going to do it, do it all. You know, right? Do it well. Give me a pepper, Matt. Okay. <clears throat> Tell those guys to stop driving around out there, Matt. I mean, geez. That's ice water trolling. Scaring all the fish away. It's like the white fish. Yep. Well, that was really good. The jalapenos are really good. They're not hot at all. Oh, there was no weight on that. And he picked it. That was a, the pickup bite. Might be a better fish than the other two. Walk a hundred foot. <laughs> Sorry for swearing. So there's the bite where they take it, but the whitefish, they come and swim like this and they feed off the bottom. And a lot of times when you're jigging your weight, you're going to always constantly feel the weight. But then all of a sudden then you start jigging and it's light. And that means that that whitefish picked that up and tilted like this. And when you don't feel the weight, you set it and he picked it up. And, and that's like the second main kind of bite that you have there. That's the harder one to know. Like... That takes a few, um, a few tries, a few misses, because you'll miss it. But if you if your jig feels light, you might have one on, or you're stuck on the ice. We're just going to hit recording. So <laughs> just it. Now he's just showing off. Dude, it's, that's it, the way it goes, though. You got the hot pole sometimes. Yep. Don't touch it. I'm worried. You you should give it over to your dad. Let him feel the hooks at once. Maybe after 10. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He'd say the same thing. <laughs> Why don't Uncle Bill then? <laughs> well, Bill's got the, that juicy color on now. So those are the trick shots by Z-Man. That's what you're throwing down there. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> Five minutes later, at 100 foot. Yep. He'll come. Ooh. A nicer one? Yeah. Let me get... Oh, there you go. Bit, bit. Pose pretty. Right at the top of the snoot. That's good. That means they're eating. That's another nice one. Yeah, they're actually getting bigger. So, JJ has been moving a bunch of people. Wait, is he bumping all the sheds? Yep, he's moving them all. And he said, so he said he's on his highest sunny sky days like this, he feels like those fish go deeper. So he's moving a bunch of shacks deeper now, and ever since he's moved shacks to the deeper side, everyone's hitting them. Now they're catching them. There's a shack that was now over by the warming shack. Mm -hmm. They're up to 17. Now. I don't know how many people are in there, but so it's 
But I feel like it was around this like 10:30-ish. I don't even know what time it is. This time frame. Yeah. There was definitely an at, like a at, like a, a window. morning bite last year yep. for sure. Picked it up. He was on, on the way picking it up. And you weren't even moving it that time. Dude, I'm barely moving it. I'm just, I'm just rubbing bottom. There's a bolt. I just got it smacked too. Just doing the same thing, almost tight lining it. Um, yeah, I'm tight. I'm tight lining it. Exactly. I'm just rubbing bottom. I'm just stirring up as much silt as possible. Maybe you'll let the real one in. Yeah. You want to try? Feels good. <laughs> There's one. Just tight line it. Like put it on bottom and then just hold your line tight. Ever since I started doing that, oh, this is another bite. Oh, I got this one, right? They're getting bigger. They're getting bigger every one. So just hover it right above bottom. Like put it on bottom and then just tight line it. They're like swimming right into it almost. Got it? Yep, I got her. I'm there, man. I'm, I'm doing exactly what you do. Take that. Take my hand. Okay. Give it a half, 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 half. Here you go. Oh, another nice half drink. Okay. And you just want this. God, oh, you're so slimy. You gotta move though. You gotta constantly be moving that. Yeah, that's coming in with the big ones. It's just right there in the top snood. They're eating right there. Throw that in the bucket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why do you keep goldfish in college? Yeah. <laughs> when you pull a bed in there, right? Look at that good one, man. Good I don't have I don't have huge head shakes right now. What a change. You know? Yep. 
Just change the bow feet underwater. Yeah, he tapped it the first time and they're not monsters, but they're 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 keepers. Especially on a slow day. All right. Well, this story is fantastic. I'm pushing about. on my pier with my son Kyle, his little brother. Must be a good guy. He is. He's a real good guy. And um, we're catching the built nice gills, you know. But I said, hey, you know what we should do? Let's take the pontoon, unhook it, and just run and shut it. And we'll get out 20 feet over the weed bed. You know, give it a try. We won't even start it up. So we do. Like I said, I lost more big fish than I know yet. World class. So, I get this pole bent, ultralights bent, like uh, catching a smallie, you know, it's like under the boat. See the silver flash in the water, I'm like, God dang it, this is the big, I've got a record. I thought it was a crappie. Down in there they call them specks. The crappies? Yeah. Okay. I thought it was a silver. And I get this thing up in the boat. And I stick my thumb in it like a you know fool because that's how we take out the bluegills. Mm -hmm. And it bit the skin off from the my nail. The, the, like I took an electrical pliers of Kleins and cut it off. And I, I whipped it, you know. And then I it said, wasn't like oh, we're like, it off the boat. You, you were like ah, yeah, it's blood, every, blood everywhere, you know. So I, I catch the fish. I'm looking at it, and I says to Kyle, I might be some dumb city boy, but this thing. That <coughs> this thing looks like a piranha. Don't yeah. Right? He goes, it does. So I says, okay. Put it in a bucket of water, and I had a boathouse right on the right on the edge of the water. I says, I put it in the boathouse till tomorrow, but I'm I'm wrapping my thumb up. And um, I'm gonna pause you for a second there, Matt. To be continued. You got your line? <laughs> tickling mud. You're just tickling mud today. I'm just mad that you interrupted this story. It gets better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's no, a he, good. He hit. Oh! 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 Heartbreaker right there. All right. Your sister fish? Huh? <laughs> Why? Maybe she'll send the hook. Oh. <laughs> Get out of here. Guy <laughs> <laughs> life is done. <laughs> All right, so back <laughs> continuation of so the Michigan potential I, piranha. The next morning, I get the bucket and I go up to the bait shop because I know the guy, and he's out on a poker run on his Harley, and his wife's there. She doesn't know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so the fishermen are coming in in the morning, and they're lifting their Polaroid sunglasses up, looking at my bucket, and they're looking at each other. They go, God dang, this is the biggest piranha I've ever seen in my life. I had him in a 100-gallon aquarium, and they never got any bigger than 6 inches, you know. This was 12 inches and uh, close to 2 pounds. It was, it was 2 pounds flat. Two, two so, pounds. like, it's confirmed now. Well, yeah. yeah so, these guys, yeah, so these guys say, that's a piranha, man. Here comes the game wardens, you know, just driving through the area. They come into the bait store, and I show them. And they go, yeah, he goes, you know, we hear about it more often than you think. People got them in their aquarium, and they don't have the heart to flush them down the toilet. Sure. And they let them go in the lake. And your lake's 80 feet deep in spot, at one spot. Maybe it made it for a year, going down low in the winter, maybe, you know, whatever. He goes, it's more common than you think, you know. In Sister Lakes, uh, they're pukas. Oh, yeah. A puka, cousin of the piranha. Its teeth were perfect. They looked like it wore braces. Yeah. You know, where piranhas are all crisscrossed and jagged. And he, and he goes, and they're harmless and they're strictly vegetarian. And I says, oh, yeah, my night crawlers are vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> he tapped that one good. Yeah, he's, yeah. Were you with your mother when the guy was fly fishing then? He called you, called you over there. Yeah, some guy was on the pontoon boat and he was like, hey, watch out, I see you got kids here. Here's piranhas in the lake. We're like, oh, our dad caught it, you know? <laughs> Yeah, got it. Well, 
I had it, eight 16 year old girls, uh, uh, my daughter and all the nieces and stuff, on the shoreline, and we're afraid to go in the water. They seem to move the piranhas. I bet. You know? But it's, they're, they're, they're the puka or whatever the heck you're saying, yeah, right? Yeah, it was a puka. It was the, it was the only one that we caught. We never caught another one, but we should have we should have mounted it just to have put it on the wall for a story, you know? You probably could find it. Was, it was huge. I mean, we, there's a Polaroid of it, or we got a picture of it. I'll send it to you. Actually, I have it in my house. Okay. This one's got some weight to it, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's fighting a little more. Big head shakes? The 100, 100 foot. <laughs> Did ya? Oh, I, you got someone else's line. That's got a nice line. one, though. Barely even taking it out of the mud. I am leaving it in there, just moving it. Is dead sticking it? Yeah, pretty much. There you go, you heard him, fellas. Just barely move it. And, and I keep reeling and I forget I got another 80 yards to go. Right. <laughs> oh, go. Oh, GoPro, oh, record! You let go. You got to keep it the other way. You don't want to switch oh. the reel? Are you fishing the wrong way? No, well, I fish this way. How do you fish? Well, <laughs> I do a lot of things, some things left handed. <laughs> oh, this one's a little better, I think. You probably got Bill's line over here. Ooh, ooh. Just in time for the boss to show up, pretend like he's working. Good one. Yeah, that's my best one. Oh, that is a good one. Yeah. Nice. Light. Off the bottom? Yeah. That was light. I had to open that door you and see get how that. much you gotta you gotta you gotta set the hook on the pickup light? Yeah, well yeah, yeah. It says it's like a crappie bite. That means there, there's another one down there. So I had to step out, I was getting a little dizzy. Yeah, yeah, I'm skunky out here, and I'm just uh, catching whitefish up here. Yeah, and... we're slamming the whitefish up here in Sturgeon <laughs> Bay there. Uh, pretty good. Pretty good bite. I'm going to keep that one. I'm going to keep that one. I'm going to pose a picture. Oops. Oh, it got off. This slacker. You should go record that Even for a smaller fish, fish, though, you can see the shoulders on that. Yep. It's a nice fillet. Yeah, that's definitely, that's, there's some stuff on there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely some stuff. There's stuff on there. Oh, the easy on the pickles. No, not the eggs. <laughs> Save the eggs, guys. Save the eggs. It's because, you know, as we started catching, we started talking like you. Oh, oh did you miss one? Oh, oh man, I have a bite. Yep. By getting... the time I get, my mind gets down there, I might actually, you might actually feel your stuff. Long fall. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Yeah. 100 foot water is deep. How deep is 100 foot? Uh, <laughs> That's about, about 100 just foot. Deep. <laughs> oh, just in time. Oh, nice. Weird. Just in time to get my hands slimy. Yep. Yeah. Let's see if you'll actually do it, though. <laughs> Ooh, look at that whopper, huh? Green Bay Silver. Slimy whitefish. Not a bad one. This guy and his guides are going to definitely take care of you. See you right here. We got the chow line behind us right now. He's cooking up brats. They got chips. They got sodas. They got everything you need out here. So, I mean, when you book a trip, you're out here. You're going to hopefully get your limit, and then these guys are going to take care of you. Like, uh, with our shack so far today, we started in about 75 feet of water, and right away you can see these guys started scrambling to get people out to the deeper water where the fish are. A lot like what's going on behind us. Everybody here. Come in, get a warm meal, warm you up, refresh it. A lot of strategy being talked right now. There's some guys that haven't figured out the bite quite yet. It's definitely, uh, you know, you got to be on bottom. You got to have the right color plastic, and you got to pay attention to the bite. So that's part of what's going on here. A lot of strategy talk. Feed your bellies full, and then get back to fishing. All right, it was another awesome day out here on the big pond fishing with JJ, man. Thanks so much for having the guide of life out here. We're going to start making this annual thing with Skunk Man and her Skunk Hat Dude and all that kind of stuff. Why don't you introduce the guys that work with you and give them a shout out. So, you know, this is Sam, uh, Jim, Justin, and Cole, and this is kind of the guys that kind of make this program happen every day. Um, you know, some days are easier, some days are tougher, but uh, I couldn't have asked for a better crew out here, honestly. They've been with me a lot of years, ever since I started this over 12 years ago. And it's been a, been a fun journey over the 12 years. Um, I'm looking forward
for it to a lot more. And they, and they worked their tail off, that's for sure. So one last time, anybody wants information to book a trip with you? Yep. Where can they find it? Just and check it out, jjsguideservice.com, uh, online, kind of all over all over the web. You can find me pretty much anywhere, so check it out. Perfect. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.